Hi class, my name is Cindy. Today we're going to be doing the burning magnesium experiment. So the first thing you're going to need are safety goggles and your lab coat. Also, if you're a girl, tie your hair up like me so you don't want to get it all burnt. Um, we're also going to need a Bunsen burner, which is, looks like this. And the Bunsen burner is going to be connected to the gas valve here. Now, as you can tell, it's connected by a piece of um, rubber tubing. So first you want to check that the tubing has no cracks in it or no slits, as this could leak gas everywhere and that would be bad. You're also going to need a flint, which looks like this. And it's basically a spark. And this is to use to light the Bunsen burner. We're also going to be using tongs, which is to grab the magnesium. Magnesium looks like this, and it comes in the shape of a ribbon. So we're just going to be taking a little bit of that. Okay. So here's the magnesium ribbon that the teacher will have prepared for you. It looks like this, just a small little piece of magnesium. Okay, so here are some rules to lighting the Bunsen burner. After making sure that the rubber tubing is safe, you want to take note of the gas valve here. That allows the... Um, the amount of gas that goes through the Bunsen burner. There's also the oxygen tube here, which if you screw or unscrew it, allows the amount of oxygen being allowed into the tube. Okay, so right now we're gonna light the Bunsen burner and see what happens to the burning piece of magnesium ribbon. So in order to light the Bunsen burner, we're gonna turn the gas valve on first and follow the 30 second rule. If you cannot light the Bunsen burner in 30 seconds, turn the gas valve off. That's a bright flame, okay. So we want to try to get a blue flame. And we're just going to adjust the valves. Okay, so as you can see, there's a blue flame. This means that the flame is hot enough for us to put the magnesium ribbon in. So here's the magnesium ribbon. It looks like this. It's just a piece of ribbon. We're going to pick it up with our tongs. And we're going to put it over the hottest part of the flame. Be careful not to stare at it too intensely because this may hurt your eyes. So here goes. and record the reaction in your lab reports. Hello class, my name is Danielle and we're going to observe the electrolysis of water using this handy dandy apparatus right here. Now the water should already be in here, it's just simple water and we're just going to turn this on and observe the bubbles. We are collecting the gas into these two tubes right here and note the two different volumes of the gases. Record your observations into your lab. Remember to turn this off. Oh, hi class. I didn't see you there. My name is Mark, and today we're just going to be doing a little experiment known as the calcium and water station in your lab today. And first, we're going to start off by looking at our products, what we have for our station. But the most important rule we should really look at is safety, which is number one within all chemical experiments. So firstly, as you know, I have a lab coat on. It's for protecting my body from all the other chemicals. And secondly, I have my goggles, which are really important for, protect, for protecting our eyes, as we will need them in this experiment. 
So as I said before, our station is known as the Calcium and Water Station. And today I'll just be telling you what the ingredients are for using in our station. And I will show you how we're gonna go through this um, experiment. So first, as you can see, I have a small beaker. Now this beaker, it's a regular beaker, it's glass, it's normal. Secondly, we have calcium metal. It is a regular metal down near the periodic table. Third, we have our tweezers. We will be using this for extracting a very important indicator. Fourth, we have our scoopla. Now, where we put our thumb here is where we'll be extracting the calcium from our bottle and placing it into our beaker. And lastly, we have our red litmus paper. Now, this is very important in class because I want you to note what actually red litmus paper does. So keep that in mind. So first, we'll start off by filling the beaker with water. Here we are, just regular tap water, folks. Secondly, we'll be placing our calcium within the water and stirring it up a little to get it going. So here we are, my thumb on the scoop, right there. Here we are, class. This is how calcium looks like. So I'm placing it within the beaker, and I'm gonna simply be using my tweezers and stirring it within, within the beaker. There we are. Now that the calcium is freshly diluted within the water, we're going to be placing our red litmus paper. So, because I hope you study what red litmus paper was, because it's going to be very important in this experiment. So, as you can see, I'll take my regular tweezers and extract the litmus paper. Here we are. This is red litmus paper, which I'll be placing within the beaker. There we go, and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a stir to see what happens. Now class, do you notice anything strange within the beaker? My red litmus paper that was once red is now blue. Look class, very interesting, oh my goodness. Now, if you study what that litmus paper does, we know it's an indicator, and I hope you know what blue indicates. Thank you for watching this experiment. Oh, hi class. I didn't notice you there. I was just coming up from downstairs. So today, I'm gonna to be doing a very important experiment. Now this experiment is highly dangerous, so I suggest you take extreme caution when performing this experiment. Today, we'll be conducting a, and observing a reaction between a piece of mossy zinc and hydrochloric acid. Note kids, I said hydrochloric acid which means it is very ex is extremely corrosive and you do not want to get it on your hands, your clothes, or anywhere that can be damaged. Our second ingredient is pieces of mossy zinc. Very, very interesting. So what I will be doing is placing a piece of this mossy zinc within the beaker of hydrochloric acid, and we will observe and record our observations within our lab report. Let us begin. Take your piece of mossy zinc and place it within the beaker. Note the reaction happening. My, my class, do you notice something happening to the zinc within the beaker? Record this observation within your lab report. When you are done, remove the zinc from the beaker, place it back into the container, leave your hydrochloric acid, and clean up your station for the next student.
Hi class, my name is Danielle, and today I'm going to be conducting a, an experiment called the Kubrick Sulfate and Iron Experiment. So for this lab, you will need your safety goggles. Girls, you will also need to tie up your hair so that you don't damage your hair. And um, we are also going to need a pair of tongs. We're going to need an iron nail. And your teacher will supply you with um, a beaker full of cupric sulfate. All right, so now we are going to take our tongs. We're going to get the nail and place it into the beaker of cupric sulfate. And we're going to leave it there for a few minutes and observe what happens. Okay, now we're going to take the tongs and remove the nail from the beaker. What do you notice about the color? Jot down your observations on your, onto your lab. Make sure that you wipe the nail before the next person does their lab. And leave the cupric sulfate solution. Hi, my name is James, and today we're going to be doing the sodium hydroxide and the sulfuric acid experiment. When you come to the station, you have to make sure that you are wearing your safety goggles, as these two L solutions are very corrosive. You will need test tubes, sulfuric acid, sodium hydroxide, and phenol phthalene. First off, take a test tube and put two eyedroppers eye full of sodium hydroxide into it. Next, you'll have to take some phenol phthalein, an indicator, into the sodium hydroxide. Notice the effects of the phenol phthalein. Then you take another tube, test tube, and take some sulfuric acid, two eyedropples of sulfuric acid into a test tube. Then you take your phenyl phthalene again and put it into a solution of sulfuric acid. Notice the effects of the phenyl phthalene on the sulfuric acid. Next off, you will have to pour one of them into the other and, note it, and record the results in, into your lab report. As you can see, it turns cloudy. Why does it do this? <laughs> and it's really simple, actually. All you're going to do is light the candle and observe the reaction. Shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> it's burning up. It's burning up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got some great. We've got some great like blooper footage. That's for sure. My name is Cindy. Today we're going to be conducting the experiment of burning a match, a candle. <laughs> I'm just gonna... Burning a match and a candle. A burning, using a match to burn a candle. Yeah. What is it called? <laughs> I can't do it. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so good. That controls the gas, so opening it creates more, um, 
more gas to be. very unsafe so we're gonna start first you have to do first thing you have to do is to turn on the gas valve <laughs> I can totally do it without the Bunsen burner okay where should I start? So now we're going to turn the... Okay. What the heck is that? Okay, we'll let it keep going. <laughs> it's playing out so much better in my head. <laughs> it's like I'm hyperventilating. Okay. I'll just walk into the frame then. That was lame. <laughs> Hello class, my name is Danielle, and today we're going to observe the electro- uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Always oh, <it's> 